first time we meet Paul, called Saul, is at the stoning of Stephen, when he is holding the cloaks of the religious authorities. Yep, that's him right there. Paul was a devout Jew whose main hobby at the time was persecuting and imprisoning Christians, and just trying to destroy Christianity as a whole. He was even given a pass to go to Damascus and persecute the Christians there. But on the way there, a bright light from heaven blinded him, and a voice said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So now Saul is blind, and elsewhere in Damascus, a believer called Ananias is called by the Lord to restore Saul's sight. Ananias, hesitant at first, does what God asks and restores Saul's sight. So now Saul, instead of trying to destroy the followers of Christ, is now preaching that Jesus is God. For a time, he went to Arabia, but then returned to Damascus. So now Saul is back in Damascus, preaching the gospel, and everyone is confused. The Jews are upset, so they conspire to kill Saul. He heard of this plot, and got some disciples to lower him out through an opening in the wall, since the gates were guarded. So Saul, Saul escapes, goes to Jerusalem, and tries to join the disciples. But they, for obvious reasons, are afraid of him. Thankfully, Barnabas helped Saul and reassured the others that Saul had indeed changed. Again, Saul was so good at preaching that the Jews tried to kill him. When the disciples discovered this, they sent him to Tarsus. After having a bit of a vacation for like ten years, Barnabas calls Saul up to preach in Antioch. During this time, some prophets from Jerusalem came up to Antioch. One of them, Agabus, predicted that a famine would sweep through the Roman world. Because of this, the believers in Antioch decided to send aid. They sent Barnabas and Paul with their help to Judea. After they finished their relief mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John Mark. While a bunch of believers were worshipping, the Holy Spirit told them to set apart Saul and Barnabas for mission work, so they prayed over them and sent them off. Now starts Paul's first missionary journey. Saul and Barnabas travel from Antioch to Seleucia, then to Cyprus, proclaiming the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. When on Cyprus, they traveled the whole island as far as Paphos. There they found Elimus the sorcerer hanging out with the proconsul Sergius Paulus. When Elimus tried to stop the proconsul from hearing God's word, Saul, now called Paul, through the Holy Spirit, blinded him. Because of this, the proconsul believed. From Paphos, they went to Perga, but John Mark left to go back home. They continued on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath, they went to the synagogue, and Paul began preaching and explaining the law and the prophets. As they were leaving, the people asked them to speak again the next Sabbath. But when they began to speak the next Sabbath, when the entire town showed up, the Jews got jealous and began to contradict what Paul was saying. Paul then rebuked the Jews and went instead to the Gentiles. Because of this, the Gentiles rejoiced, but the Jews incited the leaders to persecute and kick Paul and Barnabas out. They moved on to Iconium and did the usual speak at the synagogue. Many Jews and Gentiles believed, but the unbelievers stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds. So Paul and Barnabas stayed and preached and did miracles, but the city was divided. Some Jews and Gentiles wanted to stone them, but Paul and Barnabas found out and fled to Lystra and Derb. In Lystra, they healed a lame man and because of that are mistaken for the gods Zeus and Hermes. They used this opportunity to preach and barely managed to stop the crowd from sacrificing to them. Some Jews from Antioch and Iconium, still peeved at Paul, show up in Lystra and convince the crowds to drag Paul outside and stone him. There they left him outside the city, thinking he was dead. As some disciples showed up, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, Paul and Barnabas leave for Derby. After preaching there, they returned the way they had came, from Lystra to Iconium, Pisidian, Antioch, Pamphyla, Perga, and then swung by Italia to strengthen the disciples and appoint elders. They then went back to Antioch and spent a considerable amount of time with the disciples there. Some men from Judea showed up and started saying that you can only be saved if you're circumcised, which led to the whole Jerusalem council. There, after much debate, it was decided that you don't need to be circumcised. The apostles and elders wrote this out in a letter and sent some men, including Paul, to deliver this letter to Antioch. After spending time there, they were sent back, but Paul and Barnabas stayed behind to preach. After a while, Paul wanted to go back and visit each town he and Barnabas preached at. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with, but that caused such a disagreement that they split up. So Barnabas took John Mark and went to Cyprus, and Paul took Silas and traveled through Syria and Cilicia, starting Paul's second missionary journey. Here is where Paul wrote the letter to the Galatians. 
Quick pause, there's some controversy around this statement. George Lyons writes in his Galatians commentary that the it is uncertain. If Paul wrote to the southern part of Galatia, the letter could have been written in AD 48. This assumes that Paul's Jerusalem visit reported in Acts 11, 28-30 is the same as Galatians 2, 1-10. If Acts 15 and Galatians 2, 1-10 record the same event, which is most likely, then the letter is dated around AD 49. However, there are some big similarities between Galatians and Romans, and since Romans can be confidently dated at AD 57, some say that Galatians was written around AD 54 or 55. Personally, I think it's written in 49 due to the topic of the letter is the same as the Jerusalem Council Paul just attended, and how far up he fired up he seems in comparison to the letters dated later. Anyway, Paul heads out to Derby and Lystra where he meets a disciple named Timothy, who was spoken very highly of. Since his father was Greek, Paul had him circumcised so that when he took Timothy with him, the Jews would chill. As they traveled through the towns, they delivered the verdict of the Jerusalem Council. Through this, the churches were strengthened. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, but had been forbidden to speak the word in Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but again they were denied, so they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul saw a vision of a Macedonian man pleading for help, so they set out for Macedonia. From Troas, they sailed to Samothrace, the next to Neapolis, from there to Philippi, the leading city of Macedonia. There they met a woman named Lydia, after she believed and her whole household was baptized, she urged Paul to stay at her house. While Paul was on the way to prayer, he met a slave girl who was possessed by a spirit that predicted the future. She followed them around for many days, saying, These men who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation are servants of the Most High God. It annoyed Paul greatly, to the point of casting out the demon. When the owners realized what they did, they had Paul and Silas beaten and thrown in prison. During the night, a violent earthquake shook the prison and opened the doors. The jailer woke up, and having thought he had lost his prisoners, was about to take his own life. Paul stopped him, and that night the jailer and his household became Christians. The next morning, Paul and Silas were escorted from the jail and asked to leave town. After encouraging the believers at Lydia's house, they departed. They passed through Amph Amphipolis and Apoll Apollonia and came to Thessalonica. As usual, Paul stopped at the Jewish synagogue and proclaimed Jesus was the Messiah. A large number of both Jews and Greeks were persuaded, but some Jews became jealous and started a riot, arresting some of the believers. During the night, the disciples sent Paul onward to Berea, where the people were much nicer. However, some Jews from Thessalonica showed up and crashed the party. Paul was then sent to Athens, but Silas and Timothy stayed behind in Berea. While in Athens, Paul, Paul saw an idol to the unknown god, he then began to preach about this unknown god, and some people believed. From Athens, he went to Corinth, where he rejoined Silas and Timothy. They stayed for a year and a half, preaching to the Jews and Gentiles. During this time, First and Second Thessalonians is written. Paul returns to Antioch, on the way stopping at Ephesus, Caesarea, and Jerusalem. After spending time there, Paul travels through Galatia and Phry Phrygia strengthening disciples there, officially starting his third missionary journey. Paul travels to Ephesus and meets a group of disciples that have yet to receive the Holy Spirit. He baptizes them and goes on to preach in the synagogue for three months. But when some became hardened, Paul moved on to the lecture hall and spent two years preaching there. During this time, he wrote 1 Corinthians. During the end of Paul's year in Ephesus, the silversmiths of Artemis were upset at the Christians for saying gods made by hand are not gods and caused a riot so big it lasted for two hours and the city clerk was needed to calm them down. After the uproar, Paul departed to Macedonia and gave them words of encouragement. After, he went to Greece for three months, where he wrote 2 Corinthians and Romans. He then went back through Macedonia after discovering a plot to kill him. From Philippi of Macedonia, Paul went to Troas. In Troas, Paul spoke for so long that a young man named Eutychus fell asleep, fell from the third story window, and died. But thankfully, Paul revived him and kept talking the rest of the night. From Troas, Paul went on to Assos and sailed to Melitene. Mytilene. Then to Chios, then to Samos, and then after to Miletus, avoiding Ephesus for obvious reasons. 
From Miletus, Paul summons the Ephesian church elders and gives them a farewell address. After, Paul sails to Kos, then to Rhodes, then to Patara, then to Phoenicia, and then arrived at Tyre, where some disciples pleaded with Paul not to continue to Jerusalem. From Tyre, Paul went to Ptolemais, then to Caesarea for several days. While there, Agabus prophesied that Paul would be bound by the Jews and handed over to the Gentiles. The people pleaded with Paul not to go to Jerusalem, but Paul was determined to go. So he carried on and went to Jerusalem, ending his third missionary journey. At Jerusalem, Paul gave a report to the elders of his journey, then went to the temple to complete a purif purification ritual. When some Jews saw him there, they seized him and stirred up a riot against him because of his teaching and also because they thought he brought a Gentile into the temple, defiling it. The commander of the Jerusalem cohort heard, took out his soldiers, and came to stop the riot. They arrested Paul, but since the commander didn't know what had happened, he took Paul back to the barracks to keep him safe. Paul asked to speak to the crowd and was given permission by the commander. Paul began to give his testimony, but when he got to the part about preaching to the Gentiles, the Jews began shouting again. Now the commander is really confused and orders that Paul be interrogated with a whip to figure out what's going on. But Paul responded by saying that he's a Roman citizen. Now the commander freaks out because he just had an uncondemned citizen bound and almost whipped. Ah, oh, poor guy. So the commander takes Paul to the Sanhedrin to understand what's going on. But Paul, realizing that half were Pharisees and half were Sadducees, managed to cause a violent argument about the resurrection. The commander, again, had to retreat back to the barracks with Paul. Probably still has no idea what's going on. That night, God spoke to Paul and told him that he would testify in Rome. Some Jews plotted to kill him, kill Paul, which makes this, what, the tenth attempt? But Paul's nephew went to the commander and told him of this. So the commander escorts Paul to Caesarea by night with 400 men. Now, Paul makes his case in front of the governor, Felix. Felix was interested in what Paul said, but imprisoned him in order to gain Jewish favor. After two years, Festus becomes governor and asks Paul if he would go up to Jerusalem to stand trial. Paul responded that he would rather appeal to Caesar, which would send him to Rome. A few days later, King Agrippa and Queen Bernice visited Caesarea and asked to hear from Paul. Paul gives his defense and testimony, and Agrippa says that Paul could have been freed if he hadn't appealed to Caesar. Paul, under the guard of a centurion, departs from Caesarea and reaches Myra after a few stops along the coast of Asia. From there, they sailed, with difficulty, to Fair Havens on the island of Crete. Paul warns the centurion not to set sail again, but he ignores Paul. They get caught in a terrible storm, and after many days are shipwrecked on the island of Malta. While on the island, Paul is bitten by a viper. The local people think he's a murderer, but when he doesn't die, they instead say that he's a god. Paul heals many people while he's on Malta. After three months, they sail to Syracuse. Syracuse, from there to Regium, then to Putoliae. Finally, Paul gets to Rome. While Paul is under house arrest in Rome, he meets with many believers. He also meets with the Jews to preach to them. He stayed in Rome for about two years. He was able to preach without hindrance, and during this time wrote Philemon, Colossians, Ephesians, and Philippians. After those two years, Paul was released from imprisonment and engaged in further missionary work. During this time is when 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus were written. There's a bit of debate whether Paul actually wrote the pastoral letters, Timothy and Titus. Some say Paul was never released from prison, so he could not have written the letters. Others say that while he was released, he didn't travel as reported in the letters and didn't write them. Still others say he was released and traveled, but the letters were written by someone else who incorporated notes or fragments of Paul. Some say Paul only wrote 2 Timothy, while the rest, myself included, say he wrote all three letters, possibly en route to Rome prior to his execution. In AD 66-67, Paul is imprisoned again and martyred under Nero. The End <laughs>